Okay, so we have seen how how to think of continuity when we are working with functions of uh, a complex variable. So in this lecture, we will build on you know, these ideas and uh, look at how to think of a derivative of a function of a complex variable. Okay, so we have seen that you know the general form for a function of a complex variable is like here f of z is equal to some real part which we can explicitly write out as u of x comma y plus then there's an imaginary part for this function so you can write it as plus i times v of x comma y right? so in general both of these are you know independent functions but you know there are constraints which come in if a meaningful notion of a derivative can be uh, ascribed to uh, such a function right so let's look at you know what some of these uh, conditions are starting with the idea of what a derivative would be right so it's like a natural intuitive generalization of the idea of a derivative you're familiar with from uh, you know a function of a real variable so the derivative here is defined as a limit right so Suppose you are interested in finding the derivative of a function f of z at a point z0. So then we define the derivative f prime of z0 to be the limit of you know z tending to z0 of f of z minus f of z0 divided by z minus z0. Right? So the idea is of course how much does the function change if you change the independent variable by a small amount. Right? So f of z minus f of z0 and divided by z minus z naught in the limit of z tending to z naught. So this is exactly like uh, you know the, the idea of a derivative with a, a real variable. So the key difference of course is that you know, the notion of the limit itself is different when we are working with a function of a complex variable because the limit can be approached in you know infinitely different directions. So this limit whether it exists or not itself is something a little more subtle here. right? So yeah, so provided the limit exists, so this is the definition of the derivative of a function at some point z0. No, so you know it's not, not always the case that for arbitrary functions u and v, even if they are you know, very nice looking functions of x and y, the, you know the idea of a derivative may be meaningful, right? So we will go into this carefully ahead but here first we will just you know try and work with this definition itself and see how much we can extract from just this definition and look at a few examples so the an equivalent way of thinking of the derivative is of course to define it like this f prime of z z naught is some limit of some small delta z you know as the small delta z uh, goes to zero you, you slightly perturb your z naught right you measure the value of your function slightly away from z0 and then subtract it from the value at that point itself and then divide by this small perturbation if you wish. So f of z0 plus delta z minus f of z0 divided by delta z and I mean it's like the slope of a function if you wish that's the intuition we have from function of a real variable but here it's you know it's better to think of it in this abstract way. How much does the function change if you change the uh, independent variable by a small amount and then you have to divide by the how small the amount it is and then also take the limit of that small amount going to zero. So let's use this definition itself you know and work out some derivatives from first principles. Suppose we consider the function f of z is equal to z square. So we have already seen that this function is continuous everywhere. So if you want to take the derivative of this function at some point z naught it's it's a nice smooth function everywhere right so it's continuous everywhere and if you uh, take the derivative of this function at some point z naught so the first principle definition will tell us that we should we should work out this limit limit of delta z tending to zero f of z naught plus delta z minus f of z naught divided by delta z but this is the same thing as taking the limit delta z going to zero of this quantity z0 plus delta z the, uh, z the whole square minus z0 square the whole thing divided by delta z so if you expand out uh, you know this term so you get z0 squared plus 2 times z0 times delta z 
plus delta z the whole squared minus z naught squared and then the whole thing needs to be divided by delta z so then we see that these z naught squares will cancel out and then we are left with just 2 z naught plus delta z so you must take the limit delta z going to 0 with this function and then indeed the answer is just simply 2 z naught so in other words the derivative of the function z squared is just simply 2 z at any point z right so here we have considered the particular point z naught therefore we get 2 z naught but in general the derivative of f of z is equal to z squared is 2 z so very similar to the result we have for you know a similar function of a real variable right so there is no ambiguity with the limit and it would be the same no matter in which direction you approached z naught so you are free to check this if you so desire right so there is no ambiguity and derivative is well defined for this function now let's look at another example suppose we consider this function f of z is equal to z star right so z star is you know, looks, looks like a fairly simple function so z is equal to x plus i y z star will be x minus i y and let's see if its derivative is well defined so we must find this limit limit delta tending to 0 f of z naught plus delta z minus f of z naught the whole thing divided by delta z f of z naught plus delta z is the same as z naught plus delta z the whole star minus z naught star and then whole thing divided by delta z right so we know you know from the properties of complex numbers that the complex conjugate of a sum is the sum of the complex conjugate so you get z naught star plus delta z the whole star minus z naught star z naught star cancels and then finally you are left with just this limit limit delta tending to z tending to zero delta z star over delta z so now you see that this is a bit of a problem right because if you take this limit from you know delta z let's try to take this limit along the real axis so in other words we look for a delta z of the form epsilon plus i0 and keep on shrinking epsilon and take the limit epsilon going to 0 so this limit is the same as limit delta z uh, going to 0 of this quantity is the same as limit epsilon going to 0 of well delta z the whole star is the same as epsilon because i you know there's nothing which goes along with that so you just get epsilon over epsilon which is just one right so if you approach uh, you know, along the x-axis this limiting procedure then you are supposed to get one for an answer here but on the other hand if you approach along the imaginary axis so you are taking delta z to be 0 plus i epsilon and then take the limit epsilon going to 0 so now we are going to find you know it's the same uh, limit that needs to be carried out but delta z the whole star is minus i epsilon and then you have to divide by i epsilon so epsilon will cancel and then you're left with minus one so depending upon the direction you know from which you're taking this limit you may get different answers even if there are two different answers so that immediately tells us that this limit is not well defined right so if the limit is not well defined then there is no derivative for this function at that point so in fact there is no derivative for this function z star at any point so you can check this so it doesn't matter whether you're looking at the origin or you look at any other point right so it is uh, so in this case we have taken some arbitrary z naught right so it's it's only delta z that we are taking it to, to zero so, so you've already shown that this function does not have a derivative at any point but on the other hand this is actually a, a you know a a nice function in the sense that it is continuous everywhere right so it's just x minus i y so if you go to any point it has a well defined value and so the limit of the function at that point is also well defined and it is equal to the value of the function at that point so indeed the function is defined everywhere and it also continues everywhere but it is nowhere differentiable right so this is so we see that in fact differentiability is actually much stronger condition than continuity when we are working with functions of a complex variable right so um, all of this of course is yeah you know is connected to the fact that you know this limiting procedure is somewhat more 
non-trivial. We have all these different directions to consider only if the limiting procedure, limit, the limit is the same no matter which direction you approach the point from, only there is the limit defined. So let's look at another example. So suppose we consider the function mod z squared, right? And then we carry out the same procedure. We start from first principles. We must find this limit uh, f of z naught plus delta z minus f of z naught divided by delta z with delta z going to zero. Then we find that, you know, in place of f, the function, we just put in z naught plus delta z, uh, z mod of this squared minus mod z naught squared, the whole thing divided by delta z. But mod of a complex number squared is the same as the complex number times its complex conjugate. So we can write this as z naught plus delta z times z naught star plus delta z the whole star minus z naught z naught star. The whole thing, of course, has to be divided by delta z. We have we expand it out, and then of course the z naught times z naught star will cancel, and then we will be left with just z naught times z naught uh, z naught times delta z the whole star plus delta z you know times you know the z naught star plus delta z the whole star now the whole thing has to be divided by delta z the second two terms uh, you know will they have both have this delta z with them so they will cancel with this delta z and so the final answer or well i mean the limit that we need to evaluate is this limit delta z going to zero of this function z naught times delta z star divided by delta z plus z naught star plus delta z star All right so but from the previous example we know that you know this kind of a limiting procedure involving delta z star divided by delta z is messy business because as you shrink you know in one direction or if you approach the limit in one direction you get one kind of answer if you approach in the other direction you get another kind of answer so we would think that maybe it doesn't you you'll probably get into the same kind of difficulties which is true except that there is one point where you know this limit becomes uh, you know trivial in some sense which is when you put z naught equal to zero if z naught were to be zero then the derivative would simply reduce to you know delta zero going to zero delta z of uh, of z star because this the first term will just go to zero right because delta z the whole star is some small number and delta z is also some small number z naught is exactly zero so this first term is gone and then again z naught star is gone and then you are left with just delta z the whole star which also is of course zero because if your delta z is going to zero then so is delta z the whole star so there's no problem with this limit this also is going to go to zero so we see that there is this one very very special point z naught equal to zero where this limit exists and it's well defined so in fact this function has a derivative at exactly this point z equal to z naught but nowhere else so it's kind of a weird function right so it is it is you know it is differentiable but only at this one very very special point everywhere else it is it's, it's continuous so it has you know nice properties uh, except that it's not differentiable anywhere else right so this is also somewhat of a pathological example you can say but the key point here we are trying to make is that differentiability is a you know rather strong condition for functions of a complex variable so you know you can have a scenario where a function is continuous but not differentiable like we have seen uh, but I mean differentiability is, is a stronger condition so if a function is differentiable at a point then for sure it better be continuous there right so it is a stronger condition so exactly how strong it is and what quantity sequences differentiability has right what are what kind of you know inherent uh, structure you know this function must obey uh, if it is differentiable somewhere you know these are topics that we will discuss ahead in lectures to come that's all for this lecture thank you